So this is a multi-channel puck bat, and it's really great. It has, this one has eight channels. There are ones with 12 channels as well, and they have spacing that aligns with the spacing of pipette tips, as well as with the spacing of your tubes and of your blocks. So there's a pretty standard spacing that everything works on. And so you're able to transfer multiple, multiple channels at once, which is really great. And so there's some things to know about working with the multi-channel though. And so one is that basically how you use it. So this is one's a little weird in that we have this weird one where it kind of like, you have to go to the third stop to release it. So with most pipettes, you know, there's like a separate thing you do, but here it's like you go to the first stop, just like normal first stop is when you go in and you suck things out. And then the second stop is where you dispense things, but then this one also has a third stop, which is where you eject things. The way that you adjust the volume on here is you actually just press this down and turn this. Okay, and then it'll lock, so you don't have to worry about that, which is nice, because the ones that don't lock, then you have to constantly be looking and making sure you're not actually twisting it. But, so what you want to do is when you're using these tips, it's really important that you're even. And so when you're going down on your tips, you want to make sure you're even. So you don't want to be going at an angle or else they're not all going to get on right. And so you want to be nice and even. You don't need to press down that hard, but just like press down and then pull out. Make sure that all the tips come out. Like sometimes there's one that's like stuck back or something. No worries. Just come re re recoup. So now when you're pulling things up, you also want to make sure you're level. Because if I'm not level when I'm pulling things up, then the volumes are going to be different. But if I'm level, I'm nice and even, I come in and I pull up slowly. And I should look and make sure that all of the, all of the lanes are nice and even. Sometimes what you get is you get bubbles and the bubbles are then going to make it so the volumes are uneven. If you get a bubble, you wanna go back in. No worries, make sure you don't go to the third stop so you don't release things, but just reset. Okay, go back in. Sometimes you might need to go up and down a couple times, we'll get rid of the bubbles also. Um, so yeah, I just got a bubble, but I got rid of it. And so you wanna make sure to prevent bubbles that you're kind of just in the middle of the liquid. So you're under the surface of it, you're nice and even and you're not touching the bottom, because um, that's that way you can avoid getting the bubbles as well, unless you have a really small volume. And the reason why I say don't touch the bottom is just so you make sure that you're not just, sometimes people have a tendency to push really hard against the bottom and mm -hmm. they're not pulling things up. So what I have here is basically, now when you come to transfer it, you wanna make sure that all the liquid is gonna come out. So you wanna look and Keep your thumb pressed down when you come out and make sure you got all the liquid out. When you got all the liquid out, you're awesome. Sometimes though, when you're like trying to take stuff out of a tube, especially it can be difficult. And so you wanna make sure that, especially here, if you're like holding the tubes that you get like all of it even, you know? So if you're at an angle, then what's gonna happen is some of them are gonna have it like not in there and some of it will have it in there. And so sometimes, you can, sometimes you get bubbles that you can kind of just get rid of by pipetting up and down. What happens when you're trying to do things in a tube sometimes is that when you pull things up and then you kind of like put it down, you get that, cause you're resetting or something, you get a bubble in the bottom. And when you get that bubble in the bottom and then you come in with your tips and you go all the way down to the bottom, you're gonna have a bubble. Mm -hmm. And so if I just pulled up, then it wouldn't work. But what I, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull up and then I'm gonna pipette it back down while I'm right under the surface and then pull out. And that's gonna make sure that I don't have those bubbles at the bottom and now I can come in, I can go right near the bottom and pull out. Yeah, and so you can see that some of it is on the side of the tubes, which is why it, the volume isn't totally the same as what I put in right now because some of it was stuck on the side of the tubes. But it's really, really important that when you are doing this, you make sure that you don't have bubbles 
at like the bottom because those will affect the volume that you pull up and sometimes you're just pulling up air and sometimes when you're trying to optimize it so you get rid of air on this side then this side comes mm -hmm. down so you just want to be if you're tra doing it out of a tube just make sure they're nice and level you can do it when they're it's in a, like a rack or something too but then it's harder to see if you actually have bubbles when you are using the tips so again this is just a demo so i'm just gonna put them over here but this also shows like so normally we don't like we just refill these these rack boxes mm -hmm. but you also want to keep a couple so that you can use them to keep your tips in because a lot of times you don't have a full row mm -hmm. you just have a partial one and or you have a tip box that's like really disorganized and so you want to basically be able to arrange the tips for the amount you have. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of just play around moving things in order to make it so that you have the right number for what you want. Yeah, it'd be easier if, you, if we kind of just like remove the box <laughs> lid maybe. Um, and now we can just kind of move things around. So note that I'm using the edges here just to move things, but I'm doing that so that I have the tips in the mm -hmm. middle that's going to help make it so that you're the most level and so you're going to have the most even pressure the most level liquid levels if you have it so that your tips are in the center when you don't have samples on the other sides so i'm going to come into my tips i'm going to come over i'm going to go to the first stop go in i'm going to pull up and now i'm going to look make sure they're even there's no bubbles if there were a bubble no worries okay let's go back in reset okay let's come on okay maybe there's still a problem or something i just go up and down a few times making sure that there's no bubbles that things are nice and even now i'm going to come over i'm going to come into my tube or wherever i want to go i'm going to go down i'm going to go down to the second stop keep my thumb held there and pull out i'm going to look at my tips make sure i didn't pull out any sample we're all good now I'm going to come over and eject my tips by going to the third stop. If you are doing things where you're going from like say a new rack of tubes to a new box or something, so some, you want to kind of make sure that you're strategic about what goes where to help you keep track of things. So if I were to be filling out this whole box or something, even if I wasn't, I might just like make it so that I might move everything over this way or something once so that I have this row is going to correspond to my A samples and this row is going to correspond to my B samples and then I would go like that. Okay. So sometimes it's easiest to set up, if you have a large volume then it's easiest to set it up in like a reagent reservoir. If you have a smaller volume then or you have different things in each well. Then sometimes I'll do it in PCR strips or I'll do it in like a deep well plate. They make reagent reservoirs that are kind of like split up into sections like this. Uh, but a plate works as well as well as um, a strip tube. But these are smaller volumes. We have a small volume that we're kind of trying to pipette out. It's too small that we can't use a reagent reservoir, but not small enough to put the sample into PCR strips to transfer for out of that. And so we're putting them in this deep well plate. So we prepared a larger volume of our master mix than we actually need so that we take into account the fact that we're gonna be losing some. And now we split the volume that we made into the amount of like, channels that we want and so we have we're gonna have in our plate we're gonna have six channels so like one two three four five six and so then we're gonna do that multiple times and so we divided our total volume by the number of tubes so by six now we're pipetting it into the block so that we can then multi-channel it into the tubes There's these things called cluster tubes, which I really like. They're like these, they're like giant PCR strips kind of, but they're they're really hard to find. Um, one thing to note too about using the multi-channel is you're gonna get more volume loss, so you need to make more more liquid. Um, or because when you when you have to you have it in the reagent reservoir, when it gets to the bottom, you're gonna have liquid left over spread over a surface area that you can't actually use. With these reagent reservoirs. You kind of have to have a larger volume 
than you would in the tubes because you have more space in between the in the tubes there's space but here it is not space it's just continuous and so there's going to be a bunch of liquid that can't be used which is why they make them so they're like v-shaped at the bottom these reservoirs and if you have the smaller reservoirs there's you lose less um but the bigger ones will hold more volume and then when you're at the bottom you need to be really really careful because some of these tips would have an in the, enough and then some of them would not have enough also, if you don't have a reagent reservoir, you can use like a pipette box tip, pipette tip box lid. And if you do this, you can kind of angle things to get things at the bottom and then go right in at that bottom angle like a V. And if you're doing things in tubes or a block or whatever, you're gonna have to have a little extra liquid in each of the wells because you're gonna have less, you're always gonna lose volume when you do things. Mm -hmm. And so you will need to have a little extra in each of those wells and you're gonna lose more than you would if you just had everything in a tube. But if you just had everything in a single tube, you're then gonna have to be pipetting into each of the different wells individually. Okay. And so you could use something like a repeater pipette, which we saw were basically where you're gonna suck up once and then pipette out. Mm -hmm. But that has to be the same thing, whereas this, you can have it be different things in different tubes and then transfer it all over. And you can do whatever volume you want as long as it's with your pipette, whereas this you're restricted by the step sizes of your pipette. We're gonna go down into our samples. Be sure you're nice near the bottom, but not pressing up against the bottom. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, awesome. Make sure you don't lose any, but yeah, so it, those are really great for mixing. And so yeah, the key for mixing whenever you're doing is to make sure you have a volume that's near the volume that you have, but not like, so three quarters or so of the volumes, you have less risk of pulling up the air, but you wanna have enough that you're gonna mix it well. When you mix with the multi-channel too, it's important that you make sure that you don't then have bubbles when you come out. And so you wanna keep your thumb down, you wanna push all the way out, but you wanna do that while you're up, not at the bot very bottom or else you're just gonna get bubbles and then you won't be able to see those bubbles. And so if you have tubes and stuff, it's good to do a quick pulse spin before you actually go and use them. Make sure that you don't have the bubbles at the bottom that are gonna make problems. Are you ready to start practicing? Sure. Okay, let's go for it. Yes, and so the blue we have now just is a dye to so make it easier for us to check, but you'll have to be more vigilant when it's just clear liquid. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And then you're always going to want to dispense it like onto the surface of the, um, of the side, like the sides of the tube or near the bottom so that it doesn't get stuck on the sides. Perfect. And then check again. All is good. Awesome. Oh, there, there, we go. Go. there you go. So you're going in the middle to make sure that we get the most even. Sure, no liquid is left, and then push down to the very stop. Fabulous! Woo! What do you think of the multi channel? It's pretty cool, huh? Awesome. Lifesaver. Yes. yes. And this is not a product endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. <laughs> <laughs>